Hi guys, Anthony Turnham, professional photographer here, and in this video I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about Luminar Neo. Yes, I'm excited to say that I do have a working copy of Luminar Neo on my machine. It is currently in what they call a media release version. So it's not quite finished yet. There are still things to add, still some technologies that Skylum are working on, but this is gonna give us a pretty good feeling for what Luminar Neo is capable of doing. For me, there are two things that we we're able to ascertain from this early version of Luminar Neo already. I've only been playing around with this for a couple of hours, but already I can feel the speed of editing is much improved. So I'm really happy about that. But the second thing that I'm pretty jazzed about is much less obvious, and I didn't really appreciate it until I started playing around with this, but I will go over what that is in this video. Let's take a look. So the first thing that we can notice is that things have had a little bit of a reshuffle and we're currently looking at the thumbnails on the right hand side whereas our navigation of the library is over on the left now and one other thing to note is that the actual information for the photos is now down here on the bottom left. Now as I say this may change in the final release but that's where things are at the moment. This is a folder of photos that I've just been having to play around with today but if I jump over just to this other catalogue here and you may recognise some of these photos from the last video I did, you'll notice that it's really quick, really responsive when I click one to the other. Literally those thumbnails are loading up immediately. So that's a really good sign. And just while we're on the topic of the previous video, because I was looking in that one at the new tools such as AI power line removal, getting rid of those, the dust spot removal tool, I'm not gonna be looking at that in this video, but more of an overview. So the first thing we're gonna do is just open one of these photos up by double clicking on it, just a nice simple starry sky, and we can come into the edit section. And here on the right hand side, we have access to all our tools now those of you that are familiar with Luminar AI will see a lot of similarities here and you may see that as a good thing, you may see it as a bad thing, I don't know, but personally I like the familiarity, I recognise a lot of these tools and many of Luminar AI's tools have migrated over to Luminar Neo plus a few of the newer ones, the ones that I showed you in the last video. And within this version including the new Relight AI, Powerline removal, Dust Spot removal, we actually have 13 AI tools available to us and that's along with all the other photo developing tools. Overall it's looking like a really robust package and now the fact that it's actually working so much faster I'm a happy boy, but let's carry on having a look. So now sensibly we have the develop tool right here at the top of the stack in Essentials and that gives us access to pretty much all of the tools that you would find available inside of say Lightroom and these are the type of tools I would consider to be absolute fundamentals for a good solid raw photo editor. And just to clarify, yes, absolutely, we can also edit other file formats such as JPEGs and TIFFs. So it's not just RAW, but the fact that we can process RAW inside of Luminar Neo is a big bonus. So let's say we've made some changes to the develop module here. And let's say we want to add some Accent AI. And let's jump into the Structure AI. And we can boost that up and just like always we've got the ability to mask this in only where we want it so if we feel like we're putting in too much structure elsewhere then we could just perhaps put it over the Milky Way for instance. But so far apart from the improved speed and responsiveness I'm not really seeing something too different from Luminar AI. But let's suppose we want to change the colour of the highlight here along the horizon line to a nice warm orangey hue, kind of reminiscent of a nice sunset, but we don't want that to affect the Milky Way here. Well, no problem, because we could do that through the toning and adjust the highlights. Let's boost that up and change the hue there. So we've got the oranginess, and we could use a mask and come in and just paint that where we want it. Just soften it a little around the edges. But what happens now if we wanted to introduce some blue toning, let's say through the shadows? In Luminar AI, if we tried to colorize the shadows now, it would actually only appear where we'd drawn that mask in. However, Luminar Neo allows us to go back into the toning tool and use that globally over the whole picture again. So I'll show you how that works. Let's crank the amount up so we can see the effect a little more strongly. Now, so we've got our orange highlight going on here where we've masked it in. And if we go to the shadows and then we try to boost that saturation up there, we're only going to affect this area because that's where we painted our mask. But what if I wanted it all the way up here in the sky, giving us a nice blue rich sky? Well, I couldn't do that in Luminar AI, but I can in Luminar Neo. All I need to do is close the tool down, reopen it, 
and now I can start again from the beginning. And so I can increase the saturation of the shadows, choose the hue that I want, in this case blue, and now I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the orange highlight, which I wanted here, and now I've got a nice, rich blue sky. So if we look at our before, and we look at our after, it's pretty rough and ready, but you get the idea. We were able to use the same tool twice, once with a mask, and then once globally. I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head as to how you could utilize using the same tool many times to create creative effects. And when the full version of Luminar Neo is released, I'll be sharing those as tutorials. So if you wanna learn more and you're not subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Okay, let's take a look at this example here and see how using a tool a couple of times can be to our benefit again. So I'm gonna open up the Skin AI slider here and I'm gonna grab the amount and I'm gonna push it all the way to 100. And this is the type of tool that's best just to zoom in so that we can see the actual effect it's having. So I'm at 200% here. And let's suppose you were happy with how that looked on her face. However, her arm appeared a little bit more blotchy, a little bit more mottled, and you wanted to apply this effect again, we can absolutely do that. We just close the tool down, open it back up, and look, we can grab that amount slider again and apply Skin AI a secondary time. And now as we fit to screen, we might decide we like what it's doing to her arm, but not on her face, that's just overcooking it. And that's where we can mask this secondary effect in, just over her arm. And then if we look at our before and our after, just by clicking the eyeball tool underneath the photo, you can see that we've done a pretty good skin retouch in next to no time. Now, one of the things I've loved for a long time about Luminar is the ability to put creative LUTs over our photos. So for example, if I were to just, I don't know, randomly choose one, let's go for Palm Springs and say that's a little bit too strong, so just ease it back a bit. Maybe reduce the contrast there and perhaps put a little bit of the saturation out. But we wanted to get more creative and take it another step we can absolutely do that we just close the mood tool down go back in and now we've got the whole range of LUTs available to us again and so we can put whatever we like over the top of the existing LUT and we could do this over and over again if we wanted to so let's say we want to apply that Maria look and now we want to put another LUT over the top of that let's go for genius Pull the contrast down slightly as well, a little bit of desaturation, close that down. And we've now compounded three different LUTs, one on top of the other to create a unique look. So this was our before, and this is our after. Before and after. That's me just playing around with them, and that is a lot of fun to do that. But I'm sure if I took a little bit more time, I could come up with something a little bit more refined and bespoke than that. But it gives you that idea of how adding those tools, one on top of the other, can really level up your creativity and help you to create something unique. Let's jump back into the catalog and select another photo, because there's just one more thing that I want to show you. And again, the develop heading has that raw suffix after it, just denoting the fact that we are working on a raw file. And that is definitely preferable if we have access to raw files. And I'm literally just going to have a quick play around with this and see what Luminar Neo can do for us. Let's grab our temperature slider and warm that sunset up because that was a nice warm evening. Perhaps boost the saturation. And you'll notice that Neo now has these key color sliders all grouped together, the temperature, tint, saturation, and vibrance, and that makes a lot more sense to me, having those grouped together. Okay, let's jump into Enhance AI. Accent AI is such a good tool, and I think this tool is an absolute powerhouse of Luminar. Okay, let's throw a bit of vignetting on there just to help guide our eye into the center of the frame, bring the size in. Let's grab the dehay slider and just cook in a little bit more of that orange in the background there. I'm going to use my mask just to paint that in where I want it. Now let's use one of the new tools, Relight AI. And I did cover this in my last video, but as I grab this brightness near slider and start cranking that up, you'll see the foreground start to brighten and not the rest of the photo. And it's able to do that because the artificial intelligence is creating a three-dimensional environment based on our 2D photo. It's pretty mind-blowing, but it is doing that. And basically we're able to control the brightness of the foreground and the background and we were able to change the depth of this as well and move that further back into the scene or towards us. So it's actually a really powerful tool for relighting your scene. 
Okay, let me give you another example of how we can double up on our tools. Let's suppose we go into the Atmosphere AI tool here and I start cranking the amount up just so we can see what's going on there. And we decide that let's say we want a bit of mist in this scene with an amount around, I don't know, 35 just for argument's sake. And let's suppose we like that in the upper part of the image, but we also want to see some low level fog just kind of rolling in on the foreground here. Uh, we can actually do that, whereas in Luminar AI we couldn't. We could just have one example of Atmosphere AI and that was it, that was the end of it. Here what we can do is close that down, reopen it, and here we can now come in and choose Haze, let's say, crank the amount to 100, and then grab the depth slider and just roll that in towards our foreground. Of course, we've still got access to our mask. So if we decide that we don't want it quite as much in the background, we could come in with, I don't know, a 40% strength and just remove that a little bit from that background. Now, what the hay, now we've got some fog in there. We might want to add a little bit of sun rays. <laughs> I'm getting a bit carried away here, but let's suppose we want to pop some sun rays in there because they'll be catching in the fog. And we'll just move that sun behind this landmass here. And for those of you familiar with Luminar, this would be no surprise, but uh, those of you new to it, this is pretty cool, right? The landmass is actually masking out those sun rays, and then they're suddenly appearing out from behind it into the sky, which I think is just so cool. Okay, so I've made those changes, and now I've decided that what I did with this uh, mist in the sky, it's just a little bit overpowering, it's too much. Uh, what do I do about that? Well, with Luminar Neo, I can do something. I can jump back into my History tab here, and I can jump into the instance of the atmosphere where I created the mist, and then I have that option to come in and change the amount if I want to. So I can reduce that right back. I could play with my mask if I wanted to. I've got all of those options there. If I decide that it was too much with the haze as well, which I think it is, I'm just gonna pull that back as well. Okay, I had no intention of what I'm about to show you now, or at least try. I have no idea whether it's going to work or not. But look, if you're liking the look of this and you want to get hold of Luminar Neo and don't have it yet, they're running a promotion currently, and I've got a link to that in the description below. If they are not running that promotion when you see this video, I've got a discount code which is at Sky10, and you can put that in at the checkout, and that will save you some money if there's not already the promotion running. But Let's have a look at whether I can actually take those sun rays, which you will notice are not reflected in the water. Previously, there wouldn't be anything I could do about that in Luminar AI with Luminar Neo. What I'm hoping we can do is create another instance of that sun and move it down in the water and then use a mask just to put it in over the water. And that's one of the things I've picked up on from Skylum's presentations and webinars that I've been privileged to watch. Basically, they're hoping that Neo is gonna spark a bit more creativity with people doing their photo editing. And already I'm noticing that I meant to leave this edit there, but I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go in and throw another sun in there and see whether that works. So let's do that. Grab sun rays, put the amount up, and I'll try and just roughly mimic where it was coming from up there. And now I'm just going to use my mask just to paint it in only where I want it. So let's take these three strands here. I would be being a lot more precise with this if this wasn't just for demonstration purposes, but purely my goal here in this video is to show you guys what this media release version of Luminar Neo is capable of. There is so much more to come from Neo. It's still in development um, and we've got to wait patiently for the final release, uh, but hopefully this video has shown you guys uh, what's on the horizon, the fact that it's a hell of a lot faster than Luminar AI. And although we no longer have local masking, and if that's something that is really important to you, then yes, absolutely, Luminar AI could still be a very valid option for you as a photo editor. But for me personally, I think that is superseded by the fact that we can use any of these tools multiple times and then mask those specific tools exactly where we want them. Use it again, use it up. Like, even though this is far from a completed version, already I've got a great sense of how Luminar Neo is working and I'm really enjoying it. Those of you who've watched my tutorials and demos before know that I often used to take Luminar AI and push it probably a lot further than what Skylum intended it to be pushed with multiple tools and the way in which I was using it. I was probably trying to pull from Luminar AI more of the photo editing capabilities that I'm actually seeing inside of Luminar Neo. So for the people who really enjoyed Luminar 4 and Photoshop, I think Luminar Neo is gonna be a perfect fit. So 
Watch this space, guys. Can't wait for the final version to drop. Thank you for watching this. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.